So I came across this training demo that I did a while back in CATIA version 5. But what I like about it is that it demonstrates the idea of scalability and creating modules to to, to make the program really scalable. Uh, so what we're seeing here is that I have something called fixed constraint uh, as action, and that's uh, written in EKL. Then I have another action that is uh, insert product instance, and then a third action, which is coincident constraint. So each one of these are small modules that um, execute on their own, you know, given some uh, defined inputs. Uh, but they're pretty flexible, and I could actually use one of these modules, you know, in another program, in another sequence of events. And that's what makes it scalable, and that's what makes it flexible. What I have here is that I've got these, uh, I've got this skeleton model which consists of these four points. And what I want to do ultimately is I want to pick a fastener type. Uh, currently the fastener is, is set to demo. And when I, when I do that and I execute, uh, say like the insert product instance, it's going to call a catalog. In that catalog, it's going to search for uh, the keyword demo. And it's going to instantiate the product or the part component, which is the demo component in the catalog. Uh, so just to preview that here a second, we'll go look at the catalog. And in the catalog, we can see there are three items. We have the demo, we have a rivet, and a screw. Later, we'll add the rivet and the screw and uh, see how that reacts. OK, so, so back in the, uh, back in the uh, design environment, <clears throat> Uh, like I said, we, we have the fastener type set as demo. And the first thing that we really need to do is we need to fix the product. So we need something that's fixed in space so that we, when we instantiate and position all these other components, um, that we have uh, one part that's fixed and everything else conforms to that, to that part. So the part that's going to get fixed is this skeleton part. And I'm going to do that by running this. OK, so now that, uh, that skeleton is fixed in place, you can see when I put my cursor over uh, this item here called my fix, it's pointed to part 1.1, which is the skeleton. OK, that's fixed in place. We're going to instantiate a component. In this case, that component is going to be the demo part, which is um, really it's, it's some spheres. So we're going to instantiate four spheres. Um, so one for each of the points that exist. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now in the tree, we can see there are four instances of this sphere, uh, but they're not positioned yet. So that's where the, the next module comes into play. We'll go ahead and run that one. All right, now we can see that those uh, four um, spheres are positioned uh, to the points that were in the skeleton. So we can see those here. Those are the constraints. And then these are the instances again of those spheres. So we know that we have uh, a couple more parts defined in our catalog. So let's uh, experiment with that. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and delete these out of my product. All right. So those uh, demo parts are gone, and I'm going to extend my options here. We'll we'll keep the demo part in, uh, but we'll also add the rivet. And we'll add the screw. All right, so now I have three options in my in a pull down list here. So let's go ahead and experiment with the screw next. So the fastener type is set to screw. And again, it's going to look at our catalog. And it's going to find screw in the catalog. And it's going to open that part. And it's going to insert some instances inside that. So we've already run the fixed constraint. We don't have to do that again. We'll just go ahead and run the. And again, we have four screws that were instantiated because uh, we have four points. And we'll go ahead and constrain those to the points. OK, so now our screws are constrained to those points. Really, it's the same thing we saw with the spheres, right? So we have four points. We have four screws. Uh, let's go ahead and delete those out. OK, we talked about being modular and scalable. So what I want to do now is introduce some additional points and see how the program is reacting to that. So to do that, 
we're just going to activate our part that has the points in it. We'll create another point. Yeah, it's approximately centered, maybe not exactly, but uh, anyway, we have five points now. And you notice even the point types are different. So I have uh, a coordinate point here. I have some data points. Uh, the numbers aren't even sequenced. It, it really doesn't matter because, again, um, the approach that I'm taking is, uh, is is a modular approach. And I'm not, I'm, I construct it specifically not to be uh, name convention dependent. So let's go ahead and instantiate our Okay, so now we have five because we have five points. Okay, and just as we planned, uh, we have five screws because we have five points. And um, that will do something a little bit more, uh, I guess, as far as the scalability goes. I'll, I'll create a significant number of points. Um, and then we'll go ahead and instantiate the rivets on those. And uh, the thing is, we're not going to update our scripts because uh, the scripts are what I would say are scalable and they're they're modular. Okay, so now we've got a significant amount, number of points uh, compared to those, you know, four and five uh, points that we did before. So, um, again, based on the number of points that we've created, uh, we're going to get that many um, instances of our rivets or screws or whatever we're instantiating. And I can see we have 300. So we're going to be instantiating 300 instances of, uh, in this case, the rivet. Go ahead and select rivet. And uh, you know, uh, the point is here, we're, we're not updating any of our, our modules. We're just gonna run them. And uh, this first one is looking at how many points are inside the skeleton. And it's also looking at um, what is the fastener type we're gonna call from our catalog. And it's gonna instantiate those. And then we're gonna position those with the constraint. So let's, let's give it a go. All right, so now we have 300 screws. Uh, it's instantiated into the product, but you know, as we can see, they're just in a single location so far. We haven't constrained them to the points yet. Uh, so that's our next step here. We're gonna constrain all of our, our rivets to those points so they get positioned properly. All right, here we go. Okay, now we have all of our rivets instantiated. So we have uh, 300 rivets instantiated and positioned. Um, so that was the goal. And again, just getting back to the point of we've got these three modules. And, um, you know, one approach we could take is we could build one action that would do all of these activities. Um, it, would, it would do the fixed constraint, instantiate the product instances, and do the, do the positioning constraints. And, uh, you know, that is an approach. But then um, we may find that we're constrained to one specific scenario uh, where 
you know, for sure the fixed constraint can be used uh, in, in any product scenario. And, you know, as long as our input for the uh, product instance uh, is something like a point, um, then that could be used again in another, uh, another application. And for sure the constraint. Uh, the constraint could be used in another application as well. So by breaking these down into different modules, uh, we can reuse those modules in other, other applications. Uh, in fact, we could even create an additional uh, action that would fire these three modules. So um, even though we've created those as independent modules, we could actually create another uh, action that would call each one of those in, in, uh, in the correct order. Um, therefore, it would be kind of a one-click, you know, uh, rule or, or reaction, or I'm sorry, it would be kind of a one-click action that would fire all three of those uh, instead of going one by one. So just something to, to consider, you know, when we talk about uh, being scalable and modular, um, this is uh, definitely an approach that, that could be considered. 